Welcome to video number six in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahee, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Transportation is the to-go-to part of the four operational sectors of tourism. Transportation is essential because tourists need a means of conveyance to get from their home to a destination, travel around it, move on to other destinations, and then return home. Transportation is either by surface or air. Surface transportation is mostly by cars, buses, trains, and ships, while air travel is by airplanes. Although helicopters are used for remote insertions and flight scene, and rockets are now being developed for space tourism. Cars can be owned by the tourist or rented at a destination. Cars provide privacy and let the driver and passenger control their surroundings, route, and schedule. Travel by car can also be cheaper than other modes of travel, especially when there are several people traveling together. But it can also be lots of work, time-consuming, difficult to find places, dangerous to drive in countries with different driving rules and habits, and expensive to park. The same is true with SUVs, trucks, and mobile homes. Cars are most popular for domestic travel, especially for families. Buses are used for point-to-point -point transportation in areas not well served by train or air service, or they can just be a cheaper alternative that is also comfortable and timely. Buses in the form of deluxe motor coaches are the preferred mode of transport for tour companies. They carry passengers and luggage in comfort with many amenities, including toilets, beverage services, and communication and entertainment systems that make the journey a positive experience. Trains are high-speed comfortable and often provide facilities for dining and sleeping. The scenic views of rural areas and city centers are another benefit of train travel, as is the opportunity to mix with other travelers. Train passes that provide discount fares for specific periods of travel within a country or group of countries, such as the Aerial Pass, are excellent values, especially for individual travelers or backpackers. Many trains run on special scenic routes, such as the Glacier Express in Switzerland, and special narrow-gauge tourist trains carry tourists on many historic sightseeing routes. Ships used for long distance and transoceanic transportation are primarily a thing of the past, except for repositioning cruises. However, ships and boats are still used between major cities on various seas, lakes, and rivers, and ferries connect islands from many port cities. Nowadays, cruise ships play a major role in the tourism industry. They provide not only transportation, but also accommodations, food and beverage, and plenty of activities and attractions. Cruise ships are floating resorts. Passengers go to bed at night and wake up in a different destination, with most of their costs paid up front, and they only unpack once. Due to the popularity of cruises, more ships of various sizes are going on more itineraries to more ports around the world. Air travel is the preferred mode of transportation for long distances and over oceans, mountains, deserts, and other forbidding places. Business travelers in particular prefer flying to save time and arrive ready to work, and they are willing to pay premium fares. Tour companies commonly use flights to expedite travel on international itineraries. Air travel among all types of travelers is growing as new markets open worldwide and low cost and discount carriers make flying affordable to more people. Most discussions of transportation are centered on external transportation, but getting around a destination and taking short excursions while using it as a base are important to the quality of experience at a destination. Most internal transportation is by taxi, bus, subway, and tram, or in Asia, by tuk-tuk. Traffic congestion is a major problem in many popular cities. This means taxi and bus travel can be slow and frustrating. Trams are a bit less restricted, tuk-tuks buzz around everywhere, and subways zoom along in their own private system. Walking is the best way to see a city, and many cities are now concentrating on the quality of their walkability for both residents and tourists. Intermodal transportation enables tourists to easily transition from one mode of transport to another. For example, flying into Zurich and catching a train to Lucerne right at the airport. 
Intermodal transportation enhances tourist mobility and satisfaction, but it requires proper planning or realignment of transportation terminals so they are co-located for tourist convenience. Transportation is critical to tourism. It can be part of the fun of travel or it can be a barrier to travel, depending on the person and the destination. Even in modern times, just for the fun of it, people have motorcycled, hitchhiked, and walked around the world. They've also ridden camels and horses across deserts and continents. Friends of mine have bicycled around the world, walked the length of Japan's major islands, and kayaked around the tip of South America. So there are lots of modes of transport available. Now I invite you to watch video number seven, Attractions. Thank you.